everyone loves the row. But how did the rich woman's Uniqlo, run by twin teen sensations Mary Kate and Ashley, become the pinnacle of designer understated luxury? Celebrity brands are not new to us, okay? We have seen the celebrity makeup lines, skincare lines, self-titled perfume era, lest we forget Midnight Fantasy by Britney Spears. Um, and we've also seen the numerous celebrity collabs with, you know, well-known household brands over the years. But the thing with those projects and the success of those projects really lies on the fact that that celebrity is the face of the brand. They are promoting said product, whatever that is. They're in the ads. They're in the Vogue Beauty Secret series, whatever that is. They're in the seven days, seven looks, name dropping it in there, right? However, the row has become the altar at which minimalist girlies worship at by doing the exact opposite worn by the likes of everybody from Gwyneth Paltrow, Zoe Kravitz, Hayley Bieber, Rosie Huntington-Whiteley, Jennifer Lawrence, Emily Ratajkowski. All of the celebrities love the sodding row and it's also won, I think, about five CFDA awards and been nominated for many, many more. How have they managed to do it? Guys, if you are new here, my name is Cassie and I'm a self-diagnosed luxury addict. I put out videos on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, so if you like luxury fashion, then you're gonna love it here. So head down there, subscribe, on the bell become a member of our luxury addicted family when are we going to rehab <laughs> never now i know that you're sat here and you're like the row cassie is not a the row girly and i'm not okay i am you know i am loud luxury loud and proud okay but the row and it's sort of whole world around it fascinates me, which is why I thought today's video would be very interesting. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen, personal idols of mine growing up, okay, I had all of the DVDs. Holiday in the Sun. So little time. I still have the theme tune in my head. Okay, so little time, so much to do. I wanna spend my days with you. You know the one. New York Minute, okay, to name but a few iconic movies of theirs. So little time, I bought the collab that was at Walmart slash Asda. Okay, I had the Game Boy game. I was a big mk &A fan. They were fixtures of like bubbly pop culture. And they had all the branding at the time that went along with that. Like I said, the collaborations with, you know, household names like Walmart and all of that. However, they've also cemented themselves as fashion icons over the years. Outside of their, you know, girly pop sort of era, of um, the early 2000s, we then saw them become these like, um, they would often be ridiculed, let's say that, in tabloids and whatever, for their grunge outfits, very sort of swamped by clothes look, homeless chic. Um, Mary Kate had her trusted, beloved Balenciaga motorcycle bag that that thing was truly hanging on by a thread. It had been everywhere, it had seen everything. And whether that was your vibe or not, they were doing something very different from everybody else at the time. So they went to University at NYU, I believe that they dropped out at some point, but they moved to New York and in 2006 they started The Row, named after Savile Row in London, you know, um, famous men's suiting tailoring street. And this whole brand started out of the want to create the perfect white t-shirt, okay, with the perfect draping. It fell on the body perfectly. I believe their first collection consisted of six pieces and it took them a year and a half to put that together, right? That was the like attention to detail they wanted they were perfectionists. And it's sort of all based around the capsule wardrobe, pieces that you can throw on and not think about, the core, perfect building blocks and focus on the tailoring and the fit of those pieces within the designer luxury space. They wanted pieces that they could mix and match with the designer pieces that they already had. They rarely give interviews, but in 2011, they did sit down with Netta Porte and Ashley said, it's not a trend-based brand. So I want you to keep that in mind as we go throughout this whole thing, okay? Now, one thing that I think has been a contributing factor to the success of the brand is the fact that they have no 
desire to be the face of the brand. They actually have sort of said that they'd prefer if people sort of didn't know it was them behind it. With the row, colours are rare, okay? It's neutrals and if there are colours they're even muted within that. <laughs> um, it's clean lines, it's a focus on draping and tailoring. If you look at the pieces you're not going to see many things, if any, that are form-fitting or very close to the body. Things tend to be quite modestly cut and styled in layers, right, so that you can really build up an outfit within your comfort zone. And because of that it's actually ended up appealing to quite a wide range of women. They also now do menswear. So it's encompassing a wider range of women and body types than most designer luxury brands. There's an article that The Cut did about the row in I think like 2019 and they said, uh, a younger row client said, my mum, aunt and I all share pieces from the row. Maybe I'll regret when I'm actually 60 that I was wearing it at 34. Actually, I'm sure I will. Why was I dressed like a 60 year old? Pros and cons to that, because you can say, oh, investment pieces, you can wear them now, you can wear them in 30 years time, sort of thing, right? But also, yeah, there's the, the lack of sort of trend focus of the brand maybe means that, you know, she's got a point. <laughs> but the pieces are versatile, they are easy, and that's the point. They sort of ooze this, and this is coming from somebody who's aesthetic, it is absolutely not. It does ooze this sort of nonchalance and, and sort of carefree coolness. At the moment, quiet luxury is trending. So even more, if the row is going to be successful, we're going to see that happen now, okay? With the whole logo-less minimalism vibe. People are wanting to invest in less but better, right? And so the row is destined to thrive in this sort of environment, right? The half moon row bag is also like shot up in popularity. Um, it's very sort of minimalist and easy and it can work for actually all styles because you can have, you know, like a Y2K look with this bag or you can do the whole minimalism rich Upper East Side woman with this bag too. Anyway, Vogue reported that searches for the row um, went up 185% in January and February of 2023 compared to 2022. So just within a year, really, the popularity has shot up hugely. But the row has been doing well for a while. Before Barney's filed for bankruptcy, RIP, the row was the best selling ready to wear brand above all of your LVMH, Celine, Saint Laurent, whatevers, okay? And actually, um, when they filed for bankruptcy, they owed the row $3.7 million. We know that the clothes are understated, but the brand is in general. If you look at their Instagram, they're just showing, you know, random paintings and, you know, pieces of art and all of that. You have to sift through to actually, if you didn't know it was the Rose Instagram account, you would be like, this is an art gallery somewhere. Their first magazine advert, apologies, it was not an ad campaign. It was basically like their first sort of feature in a magazine. It was part of Vogue's 125th birthday issue. It was a double page spread of white paper that just said the row on it. Mary Kate and Ashley do not have Instagrams. And I think that they sort of breed that privacy into the brand. And with every brand, right? With every purchase, uh, you sort of buy into the world of that brand, that vibe. And theirs is this sort of super understated um, effortlessness. Now, there is also something to say that the mystery that this brand has is maybe more luxurious than what we're used to within luxury fashion, right? We live in a world where we know everything about everything within 0.1 second of the thing happening. With social media, people posting their lives, brands posting update, brands coming out with stuff all of the time, there is something to be said about the luxury of not showing any of that. Mystery is a luxury in today's world. I will say it's not all about the vibes, okay? Their whole success isn't just hinged on the fact that when you put, you know, 
their clothes on, you feel like you pay $90,000 a child in private school fees a term on the Upper East Side. There is a quality there that people keep going back to. The row is notoriously not cheap, okay? You're looking at like $1,000 for a cashmere sweater. T-shirts are $300. And they used to all be made in the US, I believe. And part of that was because Mary Kate and Ashley, from what I've read, do seem to be extremely hands-on. They are in there, in the offices daily, working with the team, they're in it. And partly why they wanted your um, American manufacturer, apart from the fact that it's an American brand, was so that they could oversee all of the details. However, during the pandemic, I believe man most of the manufacturer moved to Italy. So I'm not sure sort of how things have changed. I'm not a the row customer, so I'm not sure if you can tell a difference, but based on maybe the popularity of the brand still, maybe there isn't much of one. Americans and Ashley aren't trained designers. However, what they have sort of, or are very aware of, is, from what I've read again, is that they're very willing to learn. They employ people who have the knowledge that they need. And also they use their experiences being around luxury and as consumers to formulate the vision for the brand and make tweaks and what's important and all of that and they're very focused on the aspects that are important to them so what's the formula great quality okay you've got a vibe that the people who can afford your clothes want to be a part of and the pieces are easy to wear you can throw them on and go and you look fabulous but there is another aspect that I think is really important, and that is the fact that the row is privately owned. Mary Kate and Ashley bankroll it, okay? They don't have a big conglomerate, an LVMH, a Kering, or anything behind them, which means that as a consumer, as an, and as a, the row customer, you get consistency. You're not worried that they're gonna deviate from the row's plan over the time that you're interested in buying because there's not going to be a new creative director coming in after a couple of years changing things around making it their own. There's not going to be a revolving doors of a new vibe. You buy into the row, you know what you're getting, and there's, and there's a comfort in that consistency from a consumer's point of view. And the row customer isn't just a one-off the row customer. They are back season after season and I'll have a bit of this and I'll have a bit of that and I'll have 30 sweaters, thank you very much. Now, what I did also want to sort of uses a bit of a comparison. It's not a like for like. This isn't apples and apples. Okay, it's maybe apple and a pineapple. <laughs> but if you compare the row, a celebrity designer fashion brand, to Victoria Beckham, again, a celebrity designer fashion brand, up until last year, that brand was constantly being reported on for making losses. A whole of debt and apparently David Beckham had to keep bailing her out and whatever else. In 2022, they did report profits. And uh, part of that strategy that sort of helped is that I think that they lowered the sort of average price of the products, which is interesting because the row isn't doing any of that. The row is charging four to five figures for a coat with absolutely zero issues. And maybe it's again the detachment from them as celebrities. I'm not even going to like sort of throw in the fact that, you know, as celebrities they're very different people, Mary Kate and Ashley versus Victoria Beckham, who is much more in the public eye, who, you know, has had a, a, a very different career to them, but have generally ended up in a similarish place but maybe a part of it is that mysteriousness that detachment from it being a celebrity brand that has caused or that's contributed to such huge success for them the other thing is that the row has always known what it's been from the beginning it hasn't bent to trends and look i love a good trend right but i can respect the fact that it is a brand that knows exactly what it is. It's in its own lane entirely. It's not bothered about what anybody else is doing. And it is insanely focused on its customer. And I think with all of those things together, that 
is the Little Mary Kate and Ashley secret sauce? Let me know what you think. <laughs> I'm going to leave a link to another video over here in case you haven't already seen it. Have an amazing morning, afternoon or evening wherever you are. And in the words of my father... If you've enjoyed it, tell your friends. If you haven't, keep your mouth shut. I'll see you in my next one. Mwah. Bye guys.